Some people say that coffee is bad for you because of things like acrylamide, but is coffee actually bad for you? Today I'm going over scientific studies on how coffee consumption affects your risk of getting cancer, chronic kidney disease, cardiovascular disease, type 2 diabetes, pregnancy complications, and how it affects your overall lifespan. I hope you are having a wonderful start to the new year. I really enjoyed my time off and my break over the holidays, so thank you for your patience as I took a break from making videos here. And I also wanted to say thank you to all our new patrons. We have more than doubled in the past month over there, which is wild. And we blew way past the goal I had for doing Q&A videos. So I am now doing Q&A videos starting this month where I will answer patron questions over on Patreon in video format. And I will also be doing some other bonus videos over there because I'm really enjoying having a smaller community of very civil discussions without the YouTube platform craziness. So if you are interested in that, then check out the link in the description below. And today's video topic is addressing a question I get on occasion, which is if we should be concerned about the suspected carcinogens in coffee, such as acrylamide, and if more generally we should be avoiding coffee to improve our health. And first I'll briefly cover what acrylamide is and if we should care about it. And then, more importantly, I will go over a bunch of big meta-analyses on how coffee consumption predicts risk for all the different types of health outcomes I mentioned in the intro to this video. And first, acrylamide is a substance that is formed often through high temperature cooking, so things like roasting coffee forms acrylamide, but also cooking other types of food forms acrylamide. And acrylamide is something we do not want to get a lot of because it has been found to cause cancer as well as other issues in animals. However, we do get exposed to acrylamide quite a bit on a daily basis, even if we don't drink coffee because it's present in food as well as household products, cosmetics, and cigarette smoke, and other things. So if acrylamide is in coffee and acrylamide is bad for us and a suspected carcinogen potentially causing cancer, should we be avoiding coffee? And the best way to answer this question is to not theorize about the substance itself, but rather to see the actual evidence of how coffee itself affects these different health outcomes, including cancer. And all of the findings I'm going to be talking about in today's video come from meta-analyses of a bunch of different studies. So this is not just like one-off studies in today's video. And first for cancer, there is very good news because coffee consumption predicts less overall cancer incidence. So people who drink the most coffee have an 18% lower risk of getting cancer than people who drink the least coffee. And I'll go over a few of the cancers that have been found to have the biggest beneficial effects from coffee. And the first is liver cancer, where having two more cups per day of coffee predicts a 30 to 45% lower chance of getting liver cancer. And our next cancer that also seems to get a big benefit from coffee is colorectal cancer, where people who drink any coffee have a 17% lower chance of getting colorectal cancer than people who drink no coffee. And in terms of amounts, the people who drink the most coffee have a 30% lower risk of colorectal cancer. And the reason these comparison types in terms of amount of coffee or drinking versus not drinking coffee are different between these different types of cancers is because they come from different meta-analyses. So the authors of these different studies use different metrics to compare high versus low coffee drinking. So that's why it's kind of all over the place. And the last specific cancer I will go over today is endometrial cancer. And it's been found that each additional cup of coffee that you have per day predicts an 8% lower risk of endometrial cancer. And people who drink the most coffee have a 25% lower risk of endometrial cancer. And so what we can see from the data so far is that coffee consumption does not predict a higher risk of cancer. In fact, it predicts a lower risk of cancer. So it seems like the acrylamide in coffee is not enough to outweigh the benefits of coffee for cancer. Of course, all these studies today are predicting risk in observational studies, and even though they control for a lot of confounds and go across a bunch of different studies, it is possible that experiments in the future with coffee and cancer in the long term could find something different. But this is at least very promising that coffee is not causing cancer. And next I will go through the other health outcomes I talked about. And again, these metrics for coffee drinking are gonna vary. And our next outcome is cardiovascular disease mortality risk, which is your chance of dying of a cardiovascular disease like stroke or heart attack. And they found that the optimal level of coffee drinking to most reduce your risk is three cups of coffee per day, which gave a 21% risk reduction for dying of cardiovascular disease. For chronic kidney disease, drinking any coffee compared to no coffee predicts a 14% reduced risk of getting chronic kidney disease. And that risk goes down even more when you have more than two cups per day of coffee. And our next outcome is type two diabetes and coffee predicts a lower risk of type two diabetes. I talk about these findings in much more detail in a different video. So if you are interested in those findings, check that out after this one. 
And our next health outcome is pregnancy complications. And this one has a different story than we've had so far, where drinking more coffee is bad for pregnancy, which is probably not surprising to many of you. And specifically, it's been found that people who drink the most coffee compared to the least coffee or no coffee have a 46% higher chance of miscarriage and have a 30% higher chance of low birth weight and a 12 to 20% increased chance of preterm birth. So drinking large amounts of coffee is bad for pregnancy. You should have a conversation with your doctor about how much coffee might be okay for you while you're pregnant. But in general, you do not want to be drinking a lot of coffee when you are pregnant. And lastly, for mortality risk, which is essentially the inverse of lifespan, it's been found that the highest compared to lowest coffee drinkers have a 15% lower mortality risk. So people who drink the most coffee are living longer on average than people who drink the least coffee. And thankfully, this effect does not require drinking a ton of coffee because the benefits for drinking two to four cups per day in terms of predicting mortality risk were similar as the benefits of drinking five to nine cups per day. So you do not need to go crazy with drinking coffee in order to reap the potential lifespan extending benefits of coffee. So given that coffee likely has some carcinogens in it, why is coffee predicting all these beneficial health outcomes besides pregnancy? And the reason for that is thought to be that coffee is packed with bioactive compounds and antioxidants. And so when we drink coffee, we're getting all these good anti-cancer things and things that are good for other health outcomes. And there's also some evidence that coffee reduces inflammation. So overall, based on this data, it's looking like the benefits of coffee outweigh any potential harmful effects when it comes to health outcomes and lifespan, except for pregnancy. Also, since I've had a few comments asking if I'm funded by like big coffee or something on a prior video talking about coffee, I just wanted to be clear for the record, I don't take any funding or sponsorships or anything like that for any YouTube videos or even any of my own science because I do not personally like sponsorships or funding. I think personally it gets in the way of educational content and sharing science and I'm just not interested in being funded or sponsored. So the only reason I'm talking about coffee being good is because I've gotten that question and the studies say it's good, not because I am a coffee shill or something, which would be very strange. And this video was fun to make because a lot of the times when I answer these questions that you all have of, is X bad for you? The answer is a little depressing of, well, don't have a ton of it, it's hopefully fine. But in this case, we actually have a very positive answer of this thing seems to be very good for us. So I always like a positive video. And if you are interested in getting the main takeaways, both for this video and my past videos in the form of written little summaries, I've got those over on my Patreon, along with bonus videos, Q and A, and more. So if you are interested in that, check it out. The link is in the description below. And I wanna say thank you again to all our new patrons, as well as all the incredibly generous donations that you guys have been making on the GoFundMe. I really, really appreciate it. It's been a very nice holiday surprise to have this huge influx of donations. So thank you so much for supporting me and my efforts at making these videos for you. And that is also in the description below. So I hope that this video could help allay any fears you might've had about coffee, unless you're pregnant. And if you like this video, please like it and share it so that other people can get this information and learn that coffee is almost certainly not hurting their lifespan or causing cancer or anything like that. And if you haven't already, be sure to hit the subscribe button and the notification bell below to stay up to date on all this science. Thank you so much for watching and I will see you next time.